Good afternoon, everyone here at High Places Worship Center and those of you in um, on face, watching by Facebook or perhaps by YouTube. We're on both avenues now. You can find us at High Places Worship Center on YouTube. If you would, please press the share button to share it with your friends so that they might be blessed by something that's said today. You never know. It could be one sentence and they're blessed by it. Um, I'm going to pray for Israel, as always, but I'm also going to pray for the United States. Mm -hmm. um, the government is, we're told to pray for those in government. Mm -hmm. And I know that we do here at High Places pray for the government, and I'm sure a lot of you out there, but we need to be diligent. We're in a crazy, mixed-up world right now, and prayer is powerful. Amen. Amen. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4 says, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So we're going to pray right now for the United States government. Father God, we ask for accountability in our government at all levels. Yes. Please direct our leaders' hearts toward your, you, yes. toward your will and your ways. We ask that they enforce appropriate board controls that align with your design which will protect our nation. Father, we pray for the judicial branch of our government, which is the Supreme Court. We ask that they establish and maintain just laws. We pray for the Congress, which is the legislative branch of our government, to enact laws that follow your commands. Abba, we ask that the executive branch of our government, which is the president and his administration, will reign in righteousness. Lord, we ask you to give our leaders wisdom regarding our economy and spending. Mm -hmm. Help us to remove the spending we do not need. Yes. Yes. Lord, we ask that the U.S. weapons left behind in Afghanistan would not be used for harm. Amen. We ask you to redeem this situation for your purposes and your glory. Yes. We ask that true scientific standards will be upheld in relation to COVID and all illness. We ask you to protect our God-given right to make our own medical decisions. Yes. Abba God, there's so much more to all this than is visible to the natural eye. We ask for the spiritual strength and the discernment we need to bear up under the chaos swirling around us. Thank you for the watchmen on the wall and the many who are vigilant in uncovering truth. Yes. Give us great discernment and courage for these times. Open our eyes to false information, false leaders, and false prophets. Yes. We ask all of this in the precious name of your son, Yeshua, Jesus, our soon returning king. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to give you three ways, as I've been doing, that you can pray for Israel. I don't need to give you any ways to pray for the U.S. because it's in your face every day. <laughs> so... Um, one way to pray for Israel is to pray for an end to the terror plots of Israel's enemies in Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, Iran, and among Palestinian militants. Another way that you can pray is that Israel's effective cybersecurity, covert operations, and defensive measures will maintain the protection of the Jewish state. Another way you can pray for Israel's leaders to create strategies to maintain Israel's sovereignty. Now, we're going to pray for Israel. Loving Father, we are called to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We are praying for your peace to come very soon. May it descend upon the city of Jerusalem and spread across the whole nation of Israel until the world is filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. But Father, we know 
But Father, we know that there will be no peace in that land, nor in any deed, indeed in any of the nations of the world, until Yeshua comes to reign as King of Kings, yes. Lord of Lords, and Prince of Peace. Yes. And so, so, Lord, we pray, Maranatha, come, Yeshua, come. Yes. Heavenly Father, we lift up the Prime Minister of Israel and the whole Knesset, knowing that the Jewish nation are your people and that the world at large seems to be turning their back on Israel as a nation, as prophesied in your word. Give those in government the wisdom to make the right decisions and protect them, we pray, from those that would seek their destruction. We pray that many in the government would seek your face and prepare the nation to turn back to you as the only one true God and the protector of their nation, their land, and people. Protect those in the government, those that are in the armed forces, and those that are living in vulnerable places in the land. We pray for that day when Israel as a nation will turn back to seek your face and come to recognize Yeshua, Hamashiach, as their God and Savior. Yes. Father, we pray for the day when peace comes at last to that land, when Yeshua returns in power and great glory to set up his kingdom. We ask that you continue to bless your people with an understanding of the times. Yes. Father, in your grace and mercy, we pray that you would use your church in Israel to witness to your people, Israel, who do not know Yeshua as their Messiah and the Messiah of the world. Father, we pray that while there is still time, that many will come to know and trust Messiah as the one and only Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Abba, we humbly but boldly ask all of this in the precious name of your only son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Messiah Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now don't leave because in just a moment, Dr. Marvin is going to come with a right now word for today. Dr. Marvin, would you come please? Amen. We really need to just stay prayerful minded in all that we do. We're living, as Dr. Patricia said, in some perilous times, troubling times, and we need to know that prayer is going to be the key for us in order for us to continue to be able to fulfill God's purpose and destiny for our lives. So <clears throat> Jesus said in a parable, men ought to always pray and not faint. Amen. You know, so when we look at what's going on, all around us, you know, it's just evidence of the need for prayer. Yes. And as Dr. Patricia said, we need not only pray for our nation, but we need to pray for Israel as well. We need to continue to keep them in our prayers continually, knowing that God hears our prayers. The Bible says that God's ear is open unto the prayers of the righteous. <clears throat> so we want to continue to do that. So we thank God for blessing us this afternoon. We want to welcome those on Facebook, social media, here in high places. We welcome you, and we ask that um, you would just allow God to bless you this afternoon with what he has for us in regard to his word. I believe that God has a word for us in these times uh, that is going to resonate with us and help us as we go through from day to day. Amen. So, Father, I just want to say thank you for blessing us, Lord God, as we are gathered together in your name. I pray today, God, that you will speak your word through me, Lord God, that everyone, Lord, here in high places and on social media, Lord, will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us in this time. And that, Father God, they would take heed to the words that you are speaking to us now, Father, and allow those words to be rooted in our hearts and our spirit, Father God, so that not we're just not hearers of your word, but we are doers of your word and blessed thereby. So, Father, we honor you, we bless you for this time now, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, we've talked about um, how we've entered into this uh, Hebrew New Year, 5782, and um, how it's a sabbatical year, a smita year, which means a year of rest. And um, just looking at everything that's been going on, 
um, the Lord just really began to speak to me about how his people need to learn how to rest in him. So for a few minutes this afternoon, I'm going to speak with us in regard to resting in the Lord, okay? Resting in the Lord. And for, I guess if you want to say a text, um, I'm going to speak from Psalms chapter 37, verse 7. Psalms chapter 37, verse 7. This is a Psalm of David. And um, again, as we hear the word of the Lord speaking to us, it's what God is speaking to you directly. You know? So I want you to be able to hear the Spirit of God speak to you in regard to these times that we're living in. This is what the psalmist said in Psalms 37, verse 7. He said, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Okay? So that's what God is saying to us now in these times that we're going through. These are troubling times. You know, we look and we hear about things that are going on in our nation alone. We talk about, you know, things such as the wildfires out west, you know, and the destruction that they're causing. We're talking about things such as flooding in certain parts of our country, you know, and we're talking about things that have happened. We still got a lot of violence going on. You know, people are being killed. You know, um, a lot of injustice taking place. You know, we talk about the things that are going on, you know, in the borders, you know, where we got a lot of migrants trying to get into our country. And we talk about things such as what's going on within our government, you know, our government funding and all of those things, you know. Uh, we talk about all the things that's going on, you know, around the world. We've heard about earthquakes happening. One happened in Haiti. We talked about now volcanoes are starting to uh, rumble, and we talked about those things going on. A lot of things going on around the world, yes, you know. Yes. And you say, well, how can you rest when all of these things are going on? Mm. How can you rest when everything that you're talking about, it seems like the world is so chaotic, you know, so much going on, you know. A lot of confusion going on, you know. And then on top of that, we still got this pandemic going on. Mm. And we don't know what, what we're doing from day to day with that, you know. Right. And so you look at it and you say, well, why does God want his people to rest? Yeah. What is resting all about? Mm -hmm. And so as God began to just share with me, you know, when we talk about rest, it's not just ceasing from work that God is talking about. Mm -hmm. But it's actually God wants us to experience his peace. Mm -hmm. Okay, It's the peace that God gives us. Mm -hmm irregardless of whatever circumstance you may be encountering. It's knowing and experiencing the peace of God. That's the rest that God is talking about. God wants us to have that kind of rest, especially when we're facing these types of problems that are going on in, in our society today. It's having his peace. Over in the book of Exodus, chapter 33, as Moses was at Mount Sinai with the Lord and the children of Israel, after they had been delivered out of bondage from Egypt, and God was giving the people his laws, and they was about to embark upon a journey to the promised land. Mm -hmm. And Moses began to plead with the Lord, okay, as they was about to begin this journey to the promised land. And over in Exodus chapter 33, starting around verse 12, this is what Moses said to the Lord. He said to the Lord, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Okay. Yet you have said, I know you by name and you have also found grace in my sight. So here is Moses. He's talking to the Lord. He said, Lord, you told me to bring the people out of Egypt. You told me to bring the people here to this mountain, Mount Sinai. And I've done that, you know. And you told me that you're going to bring us into this place, this promised land. But there's one thing that Moses was most concerned about was, who will you send with us? Yeah. Okay. Who is going to go on this journey with us? Okay. And so as the conversation continued in verse 13, he said, Now therefore I pray, 
This is Moses pleading with the Lord. If I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And God heard Moses' plea. He heard Moses' heart. Yes. He knew what Moses was concerned about. Why is it important that I know who's going to go with us on this journey? Yes. Okay? Why is that so important? Mm -hmm. Okay, Because Moses knew, I don't know what we're going to face on this journey. Mm -hmm. I don't know what all we're going to encounter on this journey. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know what difficulties there's going to be on this journey, but I need to know who's going to go with us on this journey, okay? And so what the Lord responded, this is how he responded in verse 14. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Notice that. This is what God said to Moses. <laughs> Moses, you don't have to worry. You ain't got to, you know, be stressed. You ain't got to panic. You don't have to be fearful. You know, he says, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. Amen. Can you imagine how that just lifted the weight off of Moses' shoulder? Mm -hmm. Knowing that, you know, God, you called me to lead this people, okay? And, you know, so far, you know, I've seen, you know, just from the times that we've experienced, I've seen how great that is, you know, to be able to lead your people. I've seen the struggles in being able to lead this great people. Yes. But now to take them on this journey, okay, I'm going to need somebody, you know, to help me. I'm going to need somebody that's going to be there with me that I can count on, that I can depend on. Because things are going to make it heavy. And I need to know that I can lift some things off of me, you know, and be able to give that to somebody who is going to go with us. Amen. And God told Moses, don't worry, Moses. My presence will go with you. Yeah. Okay? And I'm going to give you rest. And notice how Moses ended this conversation in verse 15. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. God, if you're not going to go with us, I don't want to go on this journey. <laughs> There's no need for me to go on this journey because I know that I'm going to need some rest, some peace of mind. And the only way that I'm going to have rest and peace of mind is that I know that your presence is with us every step of the way. Amen. And that's what God promised Moses. Mm -hmm. My presence will be with you yeah, yeah. every step of the way. Mm -hmm. And I look at where we are today and the things that we're going through now with everything that's going on. Every morning you wake up, the Lord bless you to wake up and you listen to what news reports are going on. It's nothing but just trouble. It's nothing but just chaos. It's nothing but worry. It's nothing but stress. And you ask, Lord, how can I just make it through the day? How can I just make it through the day with everything that's being thrown at me? And God is saying, don't worry. Don't worry. Right. My presence will go with you. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Here's what the psalmist said in Psalm 62, verse 1. Truly my soul finds rest in God. This is from the NIV version. Notice what he said. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Notice what he was saying here. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. I don't have to worry about life, struggles, and situations and circumstances. He says, my salvation in other words, my deliverance, my protection, yes. my help, mm -hmm. my provision, yes. my healing, yes. my strength, whatever I need, it comes from God. Amen. Okay? Yes. That's what he was saying. That's why I can rest. That's why I can say that my soul uh -huh. finds rest Thank in God. You. Thank you, Jesus. you won't find it in the world. That's right. 
Because every time you, you turn around, the world is saying something different. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you can trust and what you can depend on. Because right. things continually, constantly change with the world. That's right. So David says, you know what? Here is where I can find solace. Uh -huh. Here is where I can find peace of mind. Here is where I can find rest. Yes. It's in God Amen. and in him alone. Yes. Amen. This is what the psalmist said in Psalms 91. I believe this psalm is attributed to Moses. And we read this in our spiritual blessing this morning just to show you just how God is connecting everything. Yes. It says in Psalms 91 verse 1, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High uh -huh. will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Listen to that. Again, this is the NIV version. Mm -hmm. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, you will rest yes. in the shadow of the Almighty. Notice that. Thank you, Jesus. He goes on to say in verse 2, I will say, and as Sister Angie said this morning, our blessing, that means to announce and to declare. Mm -hmm. I will say that the Lord, he is my refuge yes. and my fortress, mm -hmm. my God, and him will I trust. That's right. In him will I trust. Yes. In him will I trust. Not the world, right. not man, because they can't give me rest. That's right. <laughs> but in him will I trust, okay? So here's some benefits to resting in the Lord, okay? One, better mental health. Amen. Today, what we see going on with all that's taking place with this pandemic, mm -hmm. a lot of people have been oppressed yes. and depressed, haven't they? Amen. Seeing more people, you know, with dealing with depression, Okay? as a result of everything that's going on with this pandemic and with life itself. Yeah. Okay, But when you learn how to rest in the Lord, guess what? Better mental health. Increased concentration and memory. Okay, In other words, when you learn how to rest in the Lord, now you can focus better. Yeah. Now you can focus better yeah. because you learn what resting in the Lord is all about. Mm -hmm. It gives you better concentration and memory. You know, how often we find ourselves so stressed with situations and circumstances that we have a tendency to forget things. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you resting in the Lord, see, then you allow the Spirit of God to be able to bring things back to your remembrance mm -hmm. that, that keeps you, you know what, Encourage yes. that keeps you uplifted. That's okay, right. that reminds you that guess what? God's presence is still here with Amen. you. Healthier immune system is another benefit of resting in the Lord. Healthier immune system. Yes. Okay, and boy, how do we need that now? Because we see all kinds of things coming attacking our health, don't we? You know, and the part of the problem is our immune system has been deficient mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. So therefore, it cannot ward off the attacks that comes against our health. Mm -hmm. But when we learn how to rest in the Lord, okay, then it helps build our immune system mm -hmm. so that our immune system is stronger. Okay, mm -hmm. I know a verse in the Bible, the psalmist says, wait on the Lord, mm -hmm. okay, and he shall strengthen your heart. Amen. Wait, I say on the Lord. Amen. That waiting is learning how to rest in the Lord. Amen. Learning how to rest in the Lord. Yeah. God will build up your defense uh -huh. so that again, you're able to withstand okay, the things that come against you. Again, we know from the scripture, Paul told us to be strong in the Lord That's right. and in the power of his wow. might. Okay, by putting on the whole armor of God, mm -hmm. that immune system, that defense, so that we're able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Yes. Why? Because we're resting in the Lord. See, when you know you got on the right armor, mm -hmm. you don't worry about what the enemy is doing. Because right. you know you got the proper defense against everything that the enemy tries to come against you with. Yes. And you know that your armor will keep you mm -hmm. because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God, I think. Amen. See, all the things Amen. that God helps you to understand yes. when you're yes. resting in him, 
He puts it all together for us. Okay. So then again, we can go out and we can war and we can be victorious and we can triumph and we can overcome because we're resting in the Lord. Amen. Another benefit of resting in the Lord is reduced stress. And man, do we need that today. <laughs> We go to sleep stressed, and we can't really sleep that well because we're so full of stress. We wake up stressed in the morning, you know, and all of these things going on, and you feel like you want to pull your hair out, okay? So you cut your hair low like mine, so you don't have to deal with that, right? <laughs> but we need to be people who knows how to relieve ourselves of stress. That's right. And a lot of time it's because we haven't learned how to rest properly in the Lord. And the last thing, well, one other thing here is improve mood. Improve mood, okay? And to me, this is a big one because a lot of times when you find yourself not getting proper rest, you're easily to become irritated. You're irritable, grouchy, yes. you know? So I can just say one word to you and you done just went off, you know? But here, when you learn how to rest in the Lord, it improves our attitude, okay, and our perspective. So, improve mood. And the last one uh, that I wrote down for benefits of resting in the Lord is better metabolism. Yeah. Which, again, when we talk about metabolism for the body, we recognize that it's the energy that's produced to help with the order of our bodily functions, mm -hmm. like our heart rates, our brain function, you know, breathing and all of those things. A lot of times we find when people become really stressful, you know, their breathing is off, you know. It increases their heart rate and so forth, you know. It's, it's because they got all this stuff built up in them. And it's not good. It's not healthy for them. So when you learn how to rest in the Lord, it improves your metabolism as well. Okay. So those are some benefits to resting in the Lord. And the Lord wanted to do that for the children of Israel. Yes. And he wants to do that for us today. Yes. Okay? So when he was talking to Moses about bringing the children into the promised land, he called it a land of rest. Mm -hmm. Because they would no longer be weary. Yes. They would no longer, you know, be uh, worried about life. God was going to bring them into a place where they can enjoy the bountiful blessings of God, you know. And that's what God wanted to do. He wanted to give them a place of rest. After they had gone through all the things that they went through, being in oppression for over 400 years, having to deal with that continually, the enemy continually at them, having no peace, all of these things, God says, I have a place for you. Yeah, yeah. He called it his rest that he wanted to, to experience. Mm -hmm. But what happened with the children of Israel? Let's look in Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. I'm going to start with verse 4. In Hebrews chapter 3, what happened to the children of Israel as God was preparing them to enter into this promised land, as they was journeying through the wilderness? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 4 says, For every house is built by, by someone, but he who built all things is God. Okay? We can equate a house to life if you want to. Okay? Every house is built by someone. I, we build our lives every day, you know, yeah, yeah. based upon something, some words, you know, that we build our lives on. But it says, He who builds all things is God. And verse 6 says, but Christ, is, but Christ, the anointed one, as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. So what God is saying here is that everyone who builds a house builds it based upon something. But God is the one who builds all things. Christ the anointed one of God, he has his own house, okay? Yeah. And he says, we are his house, okay? We belong to him. We are God's house, okay? And it says we are if we do what? Hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. In other words, the New Living Translation says if we keep our courage, 
and continue to rejoice in the hope to the end. Okay? In other words, if we learn how to rest in the fact that, guess what? We are God's house. Mm -hmm. Okay? We are his house. Okay? That he's built. Okay? And he's given us promises. Okay? And one of his promises is for us to learn how to rest in him. And if we can take courage and confidence in that and continue to rejoice in knowing that we are God's house, you know, therefore, you know what, we will continue to experience the rest that God offers us. Mm -hmm. But notice what he says here in verse 7. Therefore, as the Spirit of God says, today, if you will hear his voice, Mm -hmm. (laughs) today, okay, right now, with everything that's going on, Okay. Can you hear God's voice through all of the noise that's going on? Can you hear his voice through everything that's going on, through all the media outlets, okay? through what everyone else is saying? Oh, you need to do this. You should do this. You know, you should take this. You should, you know, do this. We got mandates here saying you got to do this. And do it. Through all of that, can you hear his voice? And I believe for a lot of God's people that there's been so much noise that's been generated that it has drowned out the voice of God that they can't hear what God is saying. And that's why there's so much confusion amongst God's people. I'm not talking about the world. The world's going to stay confused, okay? But I'm talking about God's people. Why there's so much confusion. Should we do this? Should we do that? Well, if you're hearing God's voice, (laughs) you know what to do. If you're hearing God's voice, you already know that he got you. If you're hearing God's voice, you can rest in knowing that everything that God tells you, he's bringing it to pass. If you can hear his voice. Mm -hmm. So that's what the scripture said. Today, if you will hear his voice. See, if you can get past all the drama. If you can get past all of the chaos, if you can get past all of the noise and all of the confusion, if you just get to that point where you can hear his voice. That's why God invites us to go into that secret place with him. Mm -hmm. Shut the door off to all of the noise that's going on on outside so it can just be you and him. Then you can hear his voice. But notice what happened. He says, today if you would hear his voice, look at verse 8. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial, in the wilderness, where their fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years. God says, don't be like that. He says, don't harden your heart against what God is trying to do for you. He's trying to give you rest. But so many of God's people have rejected his rest. And he says in verse 10, Therefore I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their hearts. Look what happened. They always go astray in their hearts. And they have not known my ways. So God says, look what he said in verse 11. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. God wanted them to enter his rest. But because of their stubbornness, Mm -hmm. because of their rebellious heart, because of the unbelief that they allowed to enter into their hearts, they was not able to enter God's rest. You know the story of what happened when God told them it's time for you to enter into the promised land and they sent spies over there and they was over there for 40 days and they came back and there was two reports and they chose to believe the evil report. Because they forgot about God and his presence with them. They didn't think that God was able to bring them into the place of rest. That's right. And that's what's going on with a lot of God's people today. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that God can keep them in the midst of a pandemic. They don't believe that God is able to keep you, okay, from everything that comes against you. If you are abiding, in the most high, in the shelter of his wings, if you're abiding in the shadow of, of the Almighty and you think God cannot keep you, you got questions about whether God can keep you in the midst of a pandemic, 
You got a question about whether God can keep coronavirus away from you? When he tells you that you know evil shall befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling, but you got a problem with God and his word? That's why you can't rest. Because you don't trust God enough that he will come through for you, that his word will sustain you, so therefore you keep struggling with that because you can't find any rest. And every time someone comes along, it stirs up that uncertainty once again, and it causes more and more stress and panic and fear because you haven't learned how to rest in God yet. And so this is what God is saying to us today. We need to know how to take courage in God and be confident, confident in God and his word mm -hmm. that he will give us the rest that we need even in the midst of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Over in Mark chapter 4, I know you're familiar with this story, but I wanted to bring it to our attention since we're talking about rest. In Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, it talks about Jesus and his disciples. And this is after they had fed the multitude and Jesus had taught parables and so forth. And he said to his disciples, you know, let us cross over to the other side. Mm -hmm. You know, you're all familiar with this story. And it says, now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm. This was not just the ordinary windstorm, but this was a great windstorm. Unannounced. Mm -hmm. okay? That all of a sudden now you find yourself in the midst of this great windstorm that has brewed up. And it says, and the waves beat into the boat mm -hmm. so that it was already filling. But he, speaking of Jesus, was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. Mm -hmm. Now I had to stop right there because I've always wondered, with all of this going on, all of this noise going on, windstorm, that okay, great windstorm, and you know the disciples on the boat, they went quiet. You know there was a whole lot of panic, a whole lot of fear, a whole lot of stress going on because mm -hmm. the water was filling up in the boat. They was in a dire situation here. <laughs> Everything that we're trying to do to get us some peace of mind is not working. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is on the boat asleep. Mm -hmm. How can you be asleep when all this noise is going on around you? <laughs> How can you be asleep when all this commotion going on? I I'm a light sleeper, just in a little noise, and I'm waking up already. <laughs> But here's Jesus on the boat, asleep, when all of this is going on around him, all of this commotion, noise, and everything going on. And the scripture said, he's still asleep. He's still asleep. You would have thought he'd have got up and tried to pitch in and help, but he's still asleep. Okay? Did he take any medication and he's not that? He's still asleep. Okay? And so here it is. You know, they go to him to awake him. And they say to him, teacher, don't you care that we're about to perish here? How could he be asleep when all this is going on? Because he learned how to rest in the Lord. Amen. It's a prime example for us yeah. of learning what it means to rest in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of a storm, resting in the Lord. Amen. Even when all this chaos is going on around us, resting in the Lord. Even when pandemic is continually ongoing, resting in the Lord. Amen. Even when all these troubles are going on around us, resting in the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on. That's what's going on with that. He's resting in the Lord. Yeah. And notice what happened. People will come and try to do what? Disturb your resting mm -hmm. in the Lord. They came and woke him up. Jesus probably said, why are you disturbing my rest in the Lord? Okay? Why? Because I know where I'm going. I'm going to the other side. You have allowed this storm to get you distracted, 
to the point where you can't even rest to know that God is going to take you through. Because this storm has gotten your attention. Remember, you have gotten off focus now, and you're focused on the storm. You're no longer focused on what God is doing in your life. Yeah. And that's what this, this passage of Scripture helps us to understand. It's a parallel to us journeying through life. As we journey through life, there are times when things happen without any notice, without any warning in our life. Yeah. And what, how it disturbs the peace that we have. How it just seems to come in and mess up everything. Now I don't know which way to go. I don't know what to do. Why? Because I'm dealing with this storm now. Mm -hmm. And we need to learn from Jesus how to just rest in the midst of the storms. Mm -hmm. How to just rest in the Lord. Because I believe that the disciples, they forgot about God's presence. Being with them as they was journeying to the other side. And that's one of the things that the enemy likes to try to, to do to us. Is to get us to think that, you know what? God is not with you. Because he thinks that if you are dealing with something right now, that must mean that God's presence is no longer with you. Lie from the enemy. Amen. Just because you're going through something does not mean that God has forsaken you. Remember his promise, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So I believe they forgot about the presence of God being there with them. I also believe that they didn't trust that God could bring them through this storm. See, and that's where some of us are today. Do we trust God, even in the midst of what we're going through right now, that he's able to bring me through this? You can do that when you're resting in him. Jesus had no qualms about getting to the other side. Storm can brew up all at once, but guess what? Because of resting in God, we're making it to the other side. Yeah, yeah. So what did Jesus do? He gets up and he speaks to the wind, he speaks to the waves, and he declares, peace be still, doesn't he? Because yeah. peace is in him. Yeah. Peace is in him. They couldn't because they didn't, they didn't have peace because they were so concerned and worried about the storm. It had rendered them powerless yeah. over the storm. They couldn't exercise any authority over the storm. But when you're resting in the Lord, see, you can exercise the authority that God has given you over everything that you're going through in your life. Right. Every situation and every circumstance. Because mm -hmm. you're resting in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're not worried about what the outcome is going to be. You already know what the outcome is. Mm -hmm. Because you understand who is with you. Yeah. His presence is with you. So, Jesus questioned them. You know, after he had calmed the situation. And he said to them, where is your faith? Okay, Where is your faith? Okay, How is it that you had no faith in this situation? You couldn't rest. Why is it that you couldn't rest? Why couldn't you follow my example? Get your pillow and get next to me and let's go to sleep through the storm. Okay? So next time a storm comes your way, just rest in the Lord. Just know that God got you, mm -hmm. and he's going to take you through that storm. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 26, 3 says, as we're beginning to wrap this up, that God says he will keep us in perfect peace, all whose mind is stayed on him. Amen. See, that's the rest that he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Keeping us in perfect peace. Mm -hmm. Okay, That peace that surpasses all understanding. That peace that helps us to be able to see things from his perspective. That peace that tells us we don't have to worry about anything, but in everything pray. Mm -hmm. And with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto God. That's what God says he'll do. He'll keep us in perfect peace when we learn how to rest in him. Okay? So we need to be reminded of that. Because again, life can be so demanding. It can be so demanding. You know, it seems like we're carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders. We have so much that we think that we're responsible for. We gotta do this, 
We got to take care of that. You know, we got this, this person is dependent on me. That one is dependent on me, you know. And so therefore, you know, we find ourselves, again, filled with so much stress, so much anxiety, because we think that everything depends upon us. But in reality, it doesn't. It doesn't. Because God wants to help us to understand. This is what he offers us. So my last scripture for us this afternoon is in Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30. In Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30, this is what the Lord says to us in regard to resting in him. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Notice what he says here. Come to me, all you who labor mm -hmm. and are heavy late. You got some heavy burdens okay, that you're carrying. Okay? <coughs> We're concerned about this. We're concerned about that. What's going to happen today? What's going to happen tomorrow? All of these things. What's going to happen with my family? You know, what's going to happen with this loved one? And so forth. And he says, come to me. And I will give mm -hmm. you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Mm -hmm. So much on the inside of us. Sometimes people can't see what's going on on the inside of us. When we feel so weighted on the inside. Yeah. When we feel so burdened on the inside, you know. Mm -hmm. When we feel, you know, that we have nowhere else to turn, you know, and we're about to lose it. And Jesus says, I know that. He says, but I would give you my yoke, mm -hmm. and you can learn from me because I'm gentle and I'm lowly in heart. Mm -hmm. And he says, and I would, you can find rest for your soul. Mm -hmm. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So what Jesus is offering us, he says, if you come to me, mm -hmm. I'll give you rest. And everything that you've been carrying, the weight of this world, he says, guess what? You can give it to me. Yeah. You can offload it onto me. I'll carry those burdens, okay? And guess what? I give you my yoke. He says, and my yoke is easy. Mm -hmm. What a an exchange! Amen. You give God all of your worries, all of your cares, all of your concerns. You give them to Him, and He in turn gives you peace, yeah. peace of mind. You can't find a better deal than that. Amen. The world can't give you anything better than That's that. Right. Okay? So, for those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, I implore you today mm -hmm. that you would hear the Spirit of God as you listen to this word mm -hmm. and you would hear God call to you, come unto me. Mm -hmm. Come unto me. Why? Because I love you. And I know what you're going through. I know how you feel. I can feel the weight of everything that's going on in your life. And I want to offer you my rest. Yes. And the only way that you can receive his rest is to come to him. Mm -hmm. His arms are wide open, filled with love, waiting on you to come and accept him as your Savior and your Lord. And I promise you that once you do that, the burdens of life will be lifted off of you. Amen. Okay? And you'll find yourself feeling free, no longer worrying about this or that, because you found a friend in Jesus who can take care of everything that you're dealing with in life. Mm -hmm. There was a song, a hymn, that I learned as a little boy that said, what a friend we have in Jesus. Right. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Yes. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Yes. And so this afternoon, I encourage you just to take your cares to the Lord uh -huh. and allow God to give you that rest that you've been longing for. Amen? Amen. Amen. All righty, be blessed. Amen. God bless you.